guys today we are going to see class 10 chapter 6 that is life process in last class we have seen the two images just for the revision we will see now amoeba diagram of amoeba in this amoeba we see nucleus food particle pseudopodia food vacuole food particle next diagram we will see paramecium in this we see contractile vacuole cilia pellicle radiating canals micronucleus macronucleus cytoplasm food vacuoles oral groove that is vestibulum buccal overture cell mouth that is cytosome and another that is a anal pore that is a cytoproct now we will see the human body from starting we have to see that human consists of a mouth that is a buccal cavity next that is a trunk esophagus diaphragm stomach gall bladder that is also known as the stores biles bile duct liver pancreas small intestine large intestine that is colon appendix and anus this is a parts of human elementary canal now is the digestion or nutrition in human being nutrition in human being the elementary canal is basically a long tube extending from the mouth to the anus there is a saliva that is a water fluid in the mouth secreted by the salivary glands it is observed from the elementary canal it has to be broken down into smaller molecules this is done with the help of biological catalysts called enzymes the saliva contains an enzyme called salivary amylase that breaks down the food or starch which is a complex molecule to give simple sugar the food is mixed thoroughly with the saliva and moved around the mouth while chewing by muscular tongue it is necessary to move the food in a regulated manner along the digestive tube so that it can be processed properly in each part the lining of the lining of canal has muscles that contract rhythmically in order to push the food forward this process is called paralytic movement occur along the gut we we'll see the continuation points of nutrition from the nutri from the mouth the food is taken to the stomach through the food pipe or esophagus the stomach is the large organ which expands when food enters it the muscular walls of the stomach help in mixing the food thoroughly with more digestive juices the digestion in stomach is taken care by the gastric glands and protein digesting enzyme called pepsin and mucus the hydrochloric acid or hcl creates an acidic medium which facilitates the action of enzyme pepsin the mucus protects inner lining of the stomach from the action of the acid under normal conditions the exit of the food from the stomach is regulated by a sphincter muscle which releases it in small amounts into the small intestine this is the longest part of the alimentary canal which is fitted into a compact space because of extensive coiling the small intestine is a site of complete digestion of carbohydrates proteins and fats it receives the secretion of the liver and pancreas the food coming from the stomach is acidic and has to be made alkaline for the pancreatic enzymes to act bile juice from the liver accomplishes this to act on fats again we see continuation points on nutrition fats are present in the intestine in the form of large globules which makes it difficult for enzymes to act on them bile salts break down into smaller globules increasing the efficiency of enzyme action pancreas secretes pancreatic juice which contains enzymes like trypsin for digesting proteins and lipids for breaking down emulsified fats the wall of the intestine that is small intestine contain glands which secrete intestinal juice the enzymes present in it finally convert the proteins into amino acids complex carbohydrates into glucose fat and fats into fatty acids and glycerol and again we will see the continuation points on nutrition digestive food is taken up by the walls of the intestine the inner lining of the small intestine has numerous finger like projections called villi which increase the surface area for absorption the the villi 
are richly supplied with the blood vessels which take the absorbed food to each and every cell of the body where it is utilized for obtaining energy building up new tissues and the repair of old tissues the unabsorbed food is sent to the large intestine where its wall absorbs more water from this material the exit of this waste material is regulated by the anus mystery now we see how the respiration takes place of this food some organisms use oxygen to break down glucose completely into carbon dioxide and water some use other pathway pathways that do not involve oxygen first step is that the breakdown of glucose in this six carbon molecules gives rise to three carbon that is the pyruvate this process takes place in the cytoplasm second step conversion of pyruvate pyruvate gives rise to ethanol plus carbon dioxide this is a continuation this process takes place in yeast during fermentation since this process takes place in the absence of absorption absence of a this is called as an anaerobic respiration breakdown of pyruvate along using oxygen takes place in the mitochondria this process breaks up the three carbon pyruvate molecule to give three molecules of carbon dioxide and the other product is water since this process takes place in the presence of air that is oxygen it is called as aerobic respiration the release of energy in this aerobic process is a lot of greater than in the anaerobic process sometimes when there is a lack of oxygen taken the pyruvate is converted into lactic acid which is also a three carbon molecule this builds up lactic acid in our muscles during sudden activities causes cramps in this we are going to see the six carbon glucose in the presence of cytoplasm gives rise to pyruvate three molecule that in three products absence of oxygen that takes place in yeast gives rise to ethanol plus carbon dioxide plus energy lack of oxygen in human muscles is gives rise to lactic acid plus energy presence of oxygen in mitochondria carbon dioxide plus water plus energy this is the flow chart showing the breakdown of glucose by various pathways please like share and subscribe my channel